Warlords of the Three Kingdoms, Dong Zhuo. This video was made possible by our sponsor, Creative Assembly, and their new game, Total War Three Kingdoms. By the end of the 2nd century, the Han Dynasty was on the decline. As had happened many times before in China's history, this weakening of the central authority yielded power back to the local level. Many would now seize their chance to shape their own destinies and the future of the empire. Among the first to leave their mark would be Dong Zhuo, warlord of northwest China. His actions would send motion the events of the Three Kingdoms period. Dong Zhuo was born in the northwestern border commandery of Longxi. He would enter the military at a young age and eventually rise up to become a powerful figure. Serving first as an adept cavalryman, he later became a member of the Imperial Guard before advancing to the post of major. Dong Zhuo would soon prove his worth by successfully suppressing rebels in the western Bing province and was richly rewarded. Next, he was promoted to the role of court attendant, and then commandant of the center, and then regional inspector of Bing province, and finally, governor of the Hedong commandery. Each position brought him more power, influence, and most importantly, access to soldiers. In 184, a very large uprising, known as the Yellow Turban Rebellion, spread across the land. Dong Zhuo was sent with an army to attack a contingent of rebels to his northeast. However, this operation would end in failure. For the moment, Dong Zhuo would be demoted before once again being elevated to suppress another rebellion, this time to the west in Liang province. That campaign proved difficult. Despite some initial success, an outnumbered Dong Zhuo was forced to retreat only barely managing to escape alive with his army, using a clever bit of maneuvering. Eventually, the rebels would be defeated, and Dong Zhuo was promoted to the rank of general. He rejected a new post in Bing province, choosing instead to continue building up his base of power in Liang province. This territory was strategically important due to its control over the Silk Road trade route, and its ability to act as a buffer against the peoples of the steppe. Many wars had been fought in the area, and the fierce Xiongnu tribes repeatedly launched assaults across the frontier. As a result, the commanders and soldiers stationed on the border were toughened by the conditions and could deploy a large number of battle-hardened troops. By choosing to remain here, Dong Zhuo earned the respect of these powerful men. In a letter to the court, he is recorded as saying, My soldiers, both great and small, have grown familiar with me over a long time, and cherishing my sustaining bounty, they will lay down their lives for me. Such loyalty would prove quite valuable for Dong Zhuo in the years to come. Back at the Han capital of Luoyang, things were deteriorating. Emperor Ling Di was struggling to stamp out the rebellions sweeping his land, and he was forced to grant more power to provincial governments so they could better handle the situation. This helped temporarily, but ultimately it only further eroded his authority. Soon, several regions of the empire effectively declared their independence, and as if things weren't bad enough, Emperor Ling Di died in the year 189 without an appointed heir, and this set off a struggle over succession within the capital. One of the main factions in this political conflict was that of the court eunuchs. They had long been a feature of the imperial court, but in the last few decades, a group of eunuchs known as the Ten Attendants had managed to consolidate great power. This group now leveraged their position to place their preferred monarch on the throne and further tighten their grip over the government. Thus, the former emperor's eldest son, Liu Bian, was anointed emperor at the age of 17. Many feared that the eunuchs would wield even greater power through the young rulers, 
and so plotted against them. One of the chief conspirators summoned Dong Zhuo, urging him to bring troops to the capital to remove the usurpers. Not one to let a good crisis go to waste, the frontier general made his move. While Dong Zhuo marched his army down the Yellow River, events at the capital continued to unfold. The conspiracy against the eunuchs was discovered, and its ringleader, He Jin, the regent marshal, was called to appear before the empress. Wary of the danger, He Jin advanced with an armed guard of 500 men, but Once he left them to enter the palace gates alone, hidden assassins emerged from the shadows and proclaimed him a traitor. He Jin was killed, and his severed head was thrown over the palace walls. This violent move sparked a response in kind from the remaining conspirators outside. They forced their way through the gates, bursting into the palace and butchering the eunuchs and their families as they ran. In the chaos, the emperor's family was shuffled out a back gate and into the countryside. Once it became apparent that the uprising had been a success, they tried to return to the capital. But at that very moment, Dong Zhuo and his army arrived. The frontier general now intercepted the imperial caravan and escorted it back to Luoyang. Even though this was done under the guise of protecting the crown, it was apparent to all who held the real power in this delicate moment. Dong Zhuo entered the capital under arms, and is reported to have ordered his troops to re-enter the city a second time to overawe its inhabitants. With fear as his tool, he then set about taking over Luoyang. Dong Zhuo's first major move was to propose replacing the current emperor with his younger brother. Some high officials stood up to oppose the general. In response, Dong Zhuo solicited the support of the famous warrior Lü Bu, convincing him to kill his former lord and switch sides. Together, they would crush all opposition. With the new young puppet emperor Xian on the throne, Dong Zhuo declared himself chancellor and assumed control of the imperial capital. The warlord-turned-ruler immediately made his power known. Troops were unleashed on the city, killing many and ushering in a reign of terror. Within the palace, the general is said to have despoiled many time-honored traditions, carrying weapons to court, sleeping in the emperor's bed, and claiming many palace maids as his own. The sting on the legacy of the Han would not go unpunished. Warlords from across the empire now rose up to oppose the tyrannical usurper. This coalition would launch an assault on the capital. Dong Zhuo sent out his own generals and armies in opposition. The two sides clashed in a series of battles at strategic positions leading to Luoyang. Legends tell of many great duels between famous warriors taking place at this time. Eventually, the pressure proved to be too much, and Dong Zhuo chose to fall back to the more defensible city of Chang'an in the west. He evacuated not only the army, but the entire civilian population as well, looting and burning the capital in the process. Not even the tombs of the former Han emperors were spared. When coalition forces finally reached Luoyang, they found it in a pitiful state of destruction. Rather than attempt to even garrison the ruins, the armies of the coalition chose to retreat. But not all was lost to the flames, as the imperial seal would be recovered from amongst the ashes. This hugely important symbol of imperial authority was carried off by the coalition general Sun Jian. As the war dragged on, coalition forces increasingly saw each other as rivals and potential threats. The scheming led to internal conflict and disarray, which slowed the campaign to a crawl. Some warlords were determined to keep up the fight, while others returned home. The initiative was thus handed back to Dong Zhuo, who now sent his three generals back into battle. These commanders and their armies defeated the lingering elements of the coalition. 
This did little to prevent the further crumbling of the Han Empire, but it ensured that Dong Zhuo would walk away with control of the most prized piece, the Emperor. Dong Zhuo was now left to shore up his position at Chang'an. From here, he would rule the Han domains by taking control of the emperor and the imperial bureaucracy. This would be achieved through a brutal policy of intimidation. Internal threats were rooted out systematically, with captured enemies being executed in horrific public displays. Amid the thousands of murders, Dong Zhuo had the entire Yuan clan one of the most distinguished families at court, exterminated as retribution for the fact that one of their members, Yuan Shao, was the leader of the coalition. These bloody purges would continue for nearly two years, with vacancies being filled by yes-men and members of Dong Zhuo's own family. Such heavy-handed tactics, however, only built greater resentment among the people who would need to be kept in line with even more tyrannical measures. Ultimately, this was only possible so long as Dong Zhuo maintained the support of his army. Opponents of the tyrant recognized this and sought to drive a wedge between Dong Zhuo and his military supporters. A prime target for such subterfuge was Lü Bu, who had been a loyal servant and bodyguard of the general. According to legend, a plot was formed by Interior Minister Wang Yun to turn the two men against each other using his own daughter, Diao Chan. She was secretly offered in marriage to both parties while whispering to each proud warrior that her heart belonged to him alone. Dong Zhuo and Lü Bu ultimately came to blows, thinking the other was attempting to steal away their bride-to-be. Real history was a little less dramatic. Tension between Lü Bu and Dong Zhuo rose from two main sources. First, Dong Zhuo had a bad temper and would often take it out on Lü Bu, going so far as to throw weapons at him on one occasion. Lü Bu dodged the weapons, but did not forget the insult. At the same time, Lü Bu had an affair with one of Dong Zhuo's maids and was afraid that the latter would find out. So when Wang Yun and other conspirators came calling, Lü Bu was receptive to their calls. On the morning of May 22nd in 192, Dong Zhuo approached the palace. He had been notified that the emperor was about to hand the throne over to him. But this was a trap. Upon entering the gate, Lü Bu and a gang of hand-picked soldiers surrounded him. The once mighty general was forced to his knees. He cried out to Lü Bu for help. Instead, his former servant walked up and declared, I have an imperial decree to slay the rebel. And with that, Lü Bu plunged his halberd into the throat of Dong Zhuo. While his reign was short, Dong Zhuo had done much to set in motion the events that would follow. Most importantly, he had unmasked the true weakness of the Han and proved that, with enough force, one could capture the emperor and thus claim the empire. This idea, once seeded in the minds of the people, would be almost impossible to reverse. Each passing month of usurpation made a restoration of the dynasty less likely, and embolden others to follow in Dong Zhuo's ambitious footsteps. After all, the empire long united must divide. Thus it has ever been. If you would like to learn more about this period of ancient China, you can do so by checking out Total War Three Kingdoms, Relive the Past in this turn-based campaign of empire building and conquest with stunning real-time battles fought for control of the realm. Choose from a cast of 12 legendary warlords, recruit heroic characters to aid your cause, and dominate your enemies on military, technological, political, and economic fronts. Will you build powerful friendships, form brotherly alliances, and earn the respect of your many foes? Or would you rather commit acts of treachery, inflict heart-wrenching betrayals, and become a master of grand political intrigue? Your legend is yet to be written, but one thing is certain. Glorious conquest awaits.
A huge thanks is owed to our supporters on Patreon and the many talented researchers, writers, and artists who made this video possible. Please consider contributing to fund future content. If you found this topic interesting, check out these related videos about our fascinating past. Be sure to like and subscribe for more history and check out our description for ways to support the channel. Thanks for watching.